All right. Today we're joined by Nick Sullivan, who is both the founder and CEO of ChangeTip and its parent company, ChangeCoin. He's also an angel investor, a Bitcoin startup mentor, the co-organizer of San Francisco's JavaScript meetup, you should totally go, and a self-described creationeer. Nick, thank you so much for joining the show. Super happy to be here, guys. <laughs> We're happy for you to be here, too. Um, so it, it sounds like you've got a lot of things going on. Like, uh, how do you explain to somebody who's never met you or maybe never heard of you, like, what is it that you do? <laughs> That's funny. So I call myself a geek at heart. I'm a four-time VP of engineering, been doing this for 17 years, and, and what I love doing is taking something that doesn't exist and making it real. That's the, the joy that I get out of my day-to-day -day work is the creation. So that that's where the creation year term comes from. And um, my biggest problem actually living in Silicon Valley is figuring out what to say no to because uh, there's always so many great opportunities. Uh, winnowing down focus winds up being the biggest challenge that we have. That's, that's a great answer. Um, I, I, in my entrepreneurial experience, that was perhaps the hardest lesson to ever learn is you know, figuring out how to say no, right? So it seems like your biggest project right now, and you can correct me if I'm wrong in this, is currently ChangeTip. Uh, what, what problem is ChangeTip solving, and you know, how, what does it do for the people who haven't heard of it yet? Yeah, actually, the story is a good one, uh, especially you know the stuff that's not necessarily on the website or digging digging a little deeper and understanding the history is fun. So, I got real excited about Bitcoin the second time. I think we all have that story of the friend that tried to induce us introduce us to it in 2011. We didn't pay close enough attention. That was that was me. But in August of 2013, I I got excited again and really dug in that time. Read the Satoshi Nakamoto white paper. Got super excited, read the source code. Um, people that have been in the tech industry a while have seen a number of different old world to new tech revolutions, and this is this is going to be the most amazing one yet because we're talking about paper cash going to digital currency, and and the foes or the the incumbents on the other side this time aren't just the record industry or the print industry uh, or Hollywood. This, this time it's banks and federal government, so it's going to be an epic war. It might take 20 years this time instead of five or ten. Um, so I, I love being at the forefront of super disruptive technologies. I, I wanted to find a way to get myself in it. Started hanging out on Reddit slash r slash Bitcoin every day. Um, uh, almost obsessively. I, I am a pretty obsessive person when I get into something. I really get into it. And uh, saw the Reddit Bitcoin tip bot that was written by a guy named Nerdfighter Sean. And it was, and I can say this kindly because uh, uh, he he's a friend and, and, and is actually a shareholder in ChangeCoin now. We gave him some token shares for his inspiration that he, that he gave us when we did our last fundraising round. Uh, so I can say that that interface was really clunky. It, it was kind of modeled off of an IRC chat bot where you would send messages to the bot. And, and most importantly, it was Reddit only. Um, and I, saw it, I thought it was great, but I thought we need this for the whole internet, this, this idea of sharing tokens of appreciation and gratitude when you see something you like or, or real life karma. Um, I know that uh, Alex Ohanian actually talks a lot about the idea of a direct connection between someone's contribution at a social level to their lifestyle. There's a really good science fiction book called Down and Out in the Magic Kingdom by Cory Doctorow that walks through this concept of woofy where there's this direct connection between how good you are as a person and the quality of your lifestyle in a future where uh, the, the current constraints around flow, the flow of money have been removed. And so I, I, I want to create that sort of system online. It's, it's when you see something you like, um, wh why does Britney Spears get more money than uh, a, a social worker who's actually having a meaningful impact on people's lives? That, that, that system seems odd to me. So um, if I can create a mechanism where when someone's doing something online that, that's motive, that's moving people, um, we can have a low friction payment mechanism for that person to be able to be supported by the people who appreciate it. That, that's exciting to me. So I started building Change Tip uh, uh, in December of 2013. Um, actually, at the end, probably January 2014. We launched on Twitter, Reddit, and GitHub as the first three channels in March, and it's been somewhat off to the races ever since then. 
So Nick, uh, what have been some of the most interesting applications you've seen in the change to platform since 2014, yeah. and how has it measured up to your expectations or the uses you, you thought you would have? Yeah, it's always great when users surprise us, you know, and when, um, you know, so I think the giveaway threads has been great. You know, lots of people will just decide they're going to give $1,000 away. And uh, the, the, actually, that doesn't happen too much anymore because I think the novelty of that has worn off a little bit. But um, p people getting excited about it. Um, uh, I think one of the more interesting ones that stretched our brain a little bit and was quite a surprise was. Well, actually, backing up a step, when we're talking about the content production and consumption value chain, uh, that's fairly well economized right now by the concept of likes. Each platform has this established economy of a like, and, and that's the currency, if you will, on the, the given platform. But it doesn't really mean anything. It's just very, very points. Um, the, way that content is monetized right now, unfortunately, is is advertising. And so the online advertising ecosystem has inserted itself into the middle of this content production and consumption value chain. I think there's a better way, uh, which is when somebody produces great content, we just need a low friction payment mechanism that allows people watching that content to, to, to view it. Um, I want to I want to skip every YouTube pre-roll video ever by saying, yes, Google, I'll pay you half a penny to not watch this because my time is more valuable than that. And that's 10 or 100 times more than Google is making by forcing me to watch it. What we're missing is that payment mechanism. So sorry, that was a little bit of a background. Just as the online advertising ecosystem has inserted itself into that value chain, uh, on the Direct user acquisition, loyalty, rewards, uh, the, the, the cost per acquisition front. So Facebook and Google and other CPA-based advertisers, they've also inserted themselves in between product owners and e-commerce websites and the end user because they, they, they're, they're that bridge there. Um, so when we start to talk to people that roll deep in Facebook advertising, for example, they uh, get real excited about the idea of uh, when they say, well, wait a minute. So instead of paying Facebook $5 to have my user try something out, um, I could pay the user $5 to try something out, um, and eyes light up, and they get real excited. And, 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 and what was really cool was, before we had even really thought about that idea, someone on Reddit did it, and they said, hey, uh, I'm a product, I'm a startup, I want feedback from my website. Uh, so they put out a, a thread that said, go to the website, come back here, leave a comment with some feedback, and I'll tip you. And the guy filled up the thread with uh, hundreds of great, high-quality comments, and he was tipping them each like 25 cents a dollar, a very small amount of money. If, an, in, if you tried to do that on something like Facebook, A, you'd pay a lot more, and B, the engagement would be a lot lower. So I think it's a great example of low friction payments and then closing the gap between the product owners and, the, and then the people that are using the products. Um, so that was probably one of our bigger surprises. Uh, of 2014. Um, it's shifted the way that we think about this a little bit. And, you know, something that I actually had the pleasure to work with you on was the Bitcoin Bowl campaign where we were able to get a lot of, you know, some higher profile folks t uh, sending out tips and you're really just engaging the community who were, you know, providing good content. Um, a follow-up to that was the artist response. Uh, they did really like the way that they can, you know, monetize and really just, you know, find a new way to get to, to get you know a dollar or two from fans and they were very interested in it but what you're seeing now is other companies are getting into this space um, I know that very recently um, I believe it's snapchat uh, and uh, you know with Venmo coming out and there was another one I think recently that ex are accepting microtransactions are you, you viewing these as competition for artists for writers for any anyone creating content online or are you really trying to define change chip as something that's specifically cryptocurrency and are going to stay that way? Because I think that the, the future is really bright on this, but it's a matter of, you know, what, what, what are, where are you seeing yourself in a year when a lot of these other uh, systems are more, you know, rolled out and more established? Yeah, great question. So, um, ultimately, what we want is to create a micropayment infrastructure for the web. I happen to believe, and, and we've got some early proof points, that Bitcoin is the best payment channel for that to happen. There's a few reasons why. One, it's peer-to-peer -peer nature allows for transactions to be 
uh, very efficient, both in terms of, but since there's a quote, no middleman, uh, anytime you introduce a middleman, there needs to be some fees charged. So uh, allowing for peer to peer payments uh, reduces transaction fees to near zero. We're actually off chain for the tips. Uh, the only time it hits the blockchain is, is when you deposit and withdraw. So for us, tips are going further, they're free and instant. Um, uh, the, the second reason for Bitcoin that it being a great channel for microtransactions is that it's a currency neutralizer. I don't necessarily have to know if you're rupees or pesos or, or, or the US dollar on the other side. You could argue that the US dollar is almost a currency neutralizer because it's so ubiquitous. But um, And then the, 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 the third reason is the anonymity. Um, I don't need to know anything about your banking details in order to be able to send you money. Uh, I can. It's good enough to just know that you are this person on Twitter, which is why we support the social auth logins. So those three reasons, I believe, make Bitcoin the best uh, candidate for the payment channel for microtransactions. I mean, we've been talking about micropayments for at least the last 20 years now. And, you know, the one interesting question is why haven't they have taken off already? And I think uh, it's not only having a low cost payment mechanism, but a low friction application of it. So very specifically, the marriage of Bitcoin and social media, I think, is the magic point that we've needed to cross. And that's that's where change tip comes in. So, um, and, and why social media is important is, is that it needs to be an in-flow experience for whatever site I'm already on. Uh, if you see that donate with PayPal button off to the right hand side of the screen, we don't not click on it because we're cheap. Uh, we don't click on it because we're lazy and, and we do the cognitive load math of, oh wait, that's going to take me off site, break my flow. Where is it hooked up to the right bank account and what's my username and password again and ah, that's too much work for what I was already doing. But if there's a tip button right alongside like or share and it's like, oh great, this is something that I enjoy, sure. Uh, it, I, there's a point where I believe with everybody, if you reduce the friction around the payment and the amount low enough that everybody will be inclined to reward content that they appreciate. That, that's a fantastic explanation as to the whole marketplace. Um, I think we're going to get some... Oh, cool. actually, but I, uh, you know, as far as uh, competition, I'm sorry, I, I, I gave the background on why Bitcoin's a good choice for micropayments, but as far as competition and USD-based uh, options, um, I, I definitely, in you know, one of the things that we have to expect as pioneers when we go and start charging ahead of everybody with micropayments is, is that when it works, other people pay attention and decide, oh, we should do that too. Um, I know if I was a VP of technology or, or, a, or a senior engineer at one of these large entrenched companies, I'd be working on this as a hackathon if I saw change tips. So, uh -huh. um, you know, now PayPal, for example, uh, has some challenges if you start to do this because it's 2.9% and a 30 cent fee for every transaction. It's, it's actually, to, uh, you know, they're so. The, the idea of it kind of kicks it out for microtransactions. It might still be feasible and a good option for uh, sending five dollars to your favorite artist if you could lower the friction around that. And and that might that you know that's something that we're actually exploring um, uh, as another way to get money flowing through the system. And another uh, it, well broadly, what we're very focused on from a transaction flow and liquidity perspective is making it easier to top up. Uh, and actually, w one of the things that I wanted to uh, go ahead and announce today, we'll be releasing it later this week, is we're going to have the ability for users to come to the site and just buy $25 worth of Bitcoin with a credit card. Uh, that's been something that I've been chasing down since last May. Uh, so it's almost a year now that we've been working on this and it's been quite a challenge. We're in a unique position amongst all Bitcoin companies to be able to do that because we have, we have three things going for us. One, we have everybody's social data. So we can have an internal risk score around, okay, this person connected their Facebook account and it's got this verified email and it's connected to this Twitter account that's got five years of history and so we have some value and we can use that for internal metrics on does this look like a scammer that just created three Facebook accounts from Russia or no, this is a legit person who's actually putting some social 
risk at, at, at play in order to make this transaction because it's a real person. So we've got we've got a few things going for us in the Bitcoin space that make it so that we can get away with small amounts of being a Bitcoin being bought with a credit card and and all the right tools to fight fraud and risk. Um, this is an example of. W- we're actually going to be able to help grow the Bitcoin ecosystem and get more people into Bitcoin who may have been stymied in the past by a multi-day KYC or AML process at one of the, of the, the other wallets that's got both higher risk uh, associated with what they're doing and has different levels of regulatory scrutiny being placed on them because they're holding much larger amounts. Um, we're, we're under $1,000 for everything that we do, and that allows us to get much further on the... Uh, on the regulatory front. So to answer your actual question, Tony, uh, uh, yes, we're exploring other ways to get more money into the system from USD and to, to, to Bitcoin. And then also on the other side, once you've got Bitcoin on the system, you know, we get a common question now, great, what do I do with it? So, you know, buying gift cards, for example, or having a, a you know, I sent you a coffee, I'd actually like to be able to go buy that coffee. And uh, I, I'll leave off some of the specifics there, but that's definitely something that we're interested in is, is making this more real for people and providing better on-ramps and off-ramps to fiat. That's a fantastic announcement. That's really exciting. I think that's going to be really impactful for a lot of the people who are currently not yet entirely exposed to Bitcoin. So thanks for making the announcement. That's really exciting. We hope to be the easiest way to buy Bitcoin. That's that's great. That's going to be a big help. So Nick, um, ChangeDiff has received a, a little bit of criticism for being this sort of you know centralized model. Um, you know, we're we're big fans of decentralization as well. Can you address that sort of that feedback? I was really hoping that getting through a podcast called Decentralized, I wouldn't have to answer this. No, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I absolutely knew this question was coming. Um, you know, it's a common criticism. Interestingly enough, we started off off-chain, uh, where all every tip was a, uh, a transaction on a blockchain. And uh, we've quickly found that it was, A, frustrating for the tip to take 10 minutes and to have that balance be oddly reflected. B, um, uh, uh, we looked close from an architectural perspective at the issues of scale and thinking, okay, wait, we're going to do a lot more than seven transactions. I mean, we, we already have peaked at well over that during our busiest times. So um, uh, we, we don't think it's prudent to overwhelm the Bitcoin network with all of these tips back and forth. The analogy that I use is, is if you were building a, a banking or a gambling website, you wouldn't have a Bitcoin transaction for every blackjack hand. You would have one when they sat down at the table and when they left the table. So that's the similar model we use is you, you hit the big blockchain when you deposit and you withdraw, but all the tips move around on a free and instant basis. Same thing for a company like a Bitstamp or other exchanges. Um, all of the incremental trades aren't on-chain. So, uh, you know, there's there are necessary applications of where we're at today based on um, how things work. Uh, within the core protocol that require us to be off-chain in order to be prudent about it, at least. Um, Now, that being said, um, we also love the idea of using some of uh, our our capital to push the Bitcoin industry along and help improve it. So Richard Kiss is one of our employees. He is the author of PyCoin and I I think one of the, the, the top minds in Bitcoin, particularly from a uh, an implementation perspective, uh, and his charge over the next few months is to figure this out. So look at payment channels, um, which is, I think, the leading candidate for how this is to best be done, but also look at side chains. Um, we're good friends with the Blockstream folks. Uh, and then uh, even explore tree chains, and I've had a couple of conversations with Peter Todd about this, and figure out what the best solution is for us and and, and do what makes sense. And if there's anything missing from the Bitcoin Core protocol that we can do better, um, then I'm prepared to have Richard spend development resources working on it. So um, I'm all for centralization. We had to make a, a necessary... I'm sorry, I'm all for decentralization. We had to make a necessary evil choice based on the needs of our business uh, at, at the time. So I'm... I'm uh, I'm, yes, I'm ideological about c- centralization, but first and foremost, I'm practical about what our business needs to do. 
Absolutely, and the, the, centraliz the centralization we see in change is mostly centralization in your brilliant mind, Nick, so <laughs> it's something we can get behind. I mean, it's entrepreneurship. It does involve that singular mind, and there's, there is an important aspect to that for anything. Um, one of the things we like to ask about is sort of what you think the future of social tipping is going to be. Uh, with this big announcement, we're going to see a lot more of influx into the Bitcoin community. Most likely, this is a great exposure point. Um, but do you think one day we'll see even like newer applications in commerce? Like, can I buy a Ferrari via Twitter uh, with change coins and change mm -hmm. the future? Um, I don't like the Ferrari idea because then that means you'd have uh, tens of thousands of dollars in your change tip wallet. And to be perfectly honest, we don't want that. We 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 want we don't want to be the savings account. We don't want to be the checking account. We want to be the the slush fund, the amount of money that you'd be comfortable, the money in your pocket. You know, like the the, the amount that you'd be comfortable with that, uh, because we're dealing with microtransactions. Um, but well, go on go on off the reservation here for a minute. Uh, I'm not claiming that we're going to be doing all the things that I'm about to talk about or that we want to, but there are a bunch of different interesting ideas when you really wrap your start to wrap your head around microtransactions, so I'll go through a few of those. Well, and actually, one step back first. I think there are two key use cases for Bitcoin that are better than the existing payment channels. Um, one is in the one to n category, using Peter Thiel's uh, analogy of the zero to one or one to n. The one to n opportunity in Bitcoin, which is when you take an existing behavior and make it more efficient through better technology in a 10x way, is cross-border remittances. I think it makes total sense to kill Western Union. The zero to one opportunity, which is when you're inventing new human behaviors, is in micropayments, and, and I think in five years we'll look back and and we'll wonder what we did before we had micropayments. So the first spoke off of this micropayment infrastructure for the web that I think a lot of people get excited about and can wrap their head around well is, we talked about it a little earlier, but m content monetization. So disrupt the online advertising ecosystem. Uh, and not even in a paywall sort of way, but imagine an interface where you could go ahead of time and you could say, anytime I visit the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, TechCrunch, my favorite blogging sites, uh, not only would I not see a subscription or a paywall, but I would actually get a better experience because I'm willing to pay a tenth of a penny per page view, which if you know the online advertising ecosystem well, that's 10 or 100 times more than the publishers are making. I get a bill for 37 cents at the end of the month for my web browsing. I get a much, it's an inconsequential amount of money to me. I get a much better experience. My data is not splayed all over the internet. You know, everybody wins in that uh, situation except for the ad tech companies, and I'm okay with that. Uh, the, the, the next one though, that's closely related, but it's, it's actually more about, again, the friction around payments. Think about the freemium model in a product like Evernote. There's this there's this hard wall between a free user and a paid user, and it's because we have this mindset that it's so hard to convince people to spend money. And I uh, I'll theorize postulate that the reason why it's so hard to get people to spend money is not again because they're cheap. It's because they're lazy. They think, ugh. You're going to make me pull out my credit card and you're going to probably charge me more than I actually want to pay. And this is a subscription that I'm going to have to figure out later how to get you to cancel and turn off. So that's all the friction that we actually feel when somebody asks us to pay our credit card. But if it was like, oh, this is, oh, yeah, okay, I'll unlock that and it's a half a penny because I've already signed in to change tip. Um, sure, you know, I'm not even going to think about it. And so I view this as another way to have the, when you have a low friction payment mechanism, it's kind of the long tail of freemium software and it'll actually reinvent the way that we think about charging for products instead of having that harsh wall. So that's, that's one uh, of these spokes. Um, I already talked an, about another one, which is direct user acquisition. The one that I'm actually personally the most excited about is charities, causes, fundraising, donation. So years ago when the Haiti earthquake hit, Haiti earthquake hit, we saw Google engineers get together and come up with an SMS short code that allowed you to send $10 by, don't, by just typing in a five character. And I think they raised about $4 million. And what was interesting about that is it just showed if you re reduce the friction so, so low that somebody doesn't have to think about it, they'll do it. Then we also saw recently the Ice Bucket Challenge, which tapped into the power and the virality of social media. And 
well, what we want to do is be able to pull those two together and have, so what if, for example, you could have donated 10 cents by retweeting something? Uh, how, how much more successful would that Ice Bucket Challenge campaign have been? So this is kind of my passion project along with uh, uh, Victoria Van Eyck. We want to enable micropayments for Charities Causes Fundraising donation this year. That's awesome, and um, Victoria definitely has spoken to me about that in the past, and it seems like it's a great idea to raise funds for a, a lot of different charities, and when it comes to personal passions, obviously, uh, it seems like Bitcoin is one we share, and um, when you mentioned earlier that in 2011, you know, everyone had that friend, um, unfortunately, I was that friend and the only person in the community that I knew that even had any interest in Bitcoin. I had to do a lot of Googling and figuring it out. Um, but, you know, it was one of those things where technology has always been somewhat of a passion, you know, in different ways and, and really different technologies, even back to studying mills, which I did uh, on a weekend five years ago. So I guess with that being said, how did you get into technology and how did something like ChangeTip come to be where you really went, pa you know, past just an interest into, you know, hey, I'm starting a company. Is, is this your first company? Have you done anything in the past? I, there's a lot of questions here, but I figured, you know, they're, they're all probably very interrelated because they have, they have to do with something you love and are passionate about. Yeah, I mean, to tie a few of the earlier answers back together, I'm very passionate about creating things. I'm passionate about disruptive technologies. Um, you know, putting my idealist hat on a little bit, um, you know, in my early 20s, I started to get angry when I started watching how governments were run and how... Um, uh, Everything had effectively turned into a vote auction. Um, the U.S. Federal Reserve Bank has become effectively the most powerful organization in the world, and they have their their hands all over the U.S. Congress. And you know, there was part of me that thought, "Wow, this system is just fucked, and it'll always be fucked." Um, but uh, <laughs> then, you know, later in my late twenties and early thirties, I had gotten to the point where I was a little apathetic because I just figured, "Ah, oh, it's just going to be like this." But um, part of the light bulbs that went off for me when I saw Bitcoin was realizing that so much of that control revolves around the control, uh, the flow and the supply of money. And I know it's cliche to say give power back to the people, but I really believe that at a government and at the top levels of power within our entire planet Earth, uh, the, 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 the main choke points are people's ability to have figured out how to control the flat flow of money. So if we take that out of their hands and put that back into everyday people's lives and, and quote, democratize that industry, um, I think we actually have the, the ability to take back government, unhack democracy. Um, so I'm sorry, I'm getting a little uh, idealistic here, but that that's that's why I want to push Bitcoin forward, and that's why I want to see it. This is this is not just me playing with cool technology. I actually think that this is going to make a huge dent in the very fabric of the way that governments and and control structures are 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 derived today. Nick, you're speaking to uh, the people who uh, actually similarly believe in the same types of things that you're talking about. I think a lot of us have shared similar experiences of being, you know, disenfranchised, and that Bitcoin has woken us up to new perspectives and the the reality that hey, we can, you know, unbreak this system. So I really appreciate your your time today and sharing your thoughts on the show for our listeners. Um, final question: uh, Do you have any upcoming projects? Things you're excited about? And then uh, maybe if you'll just share, where can people find you online? Um, obviously, you're on Twitter, but uh, if, if you've got a, a website, other website than ChangeTip, this would be the time to share that. Yeah. So let's see. I'm 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 trying to figure out what I can say without getting my product manager yelling at me for, <laughs> for leaking information. Um, we have some very exciting things coming. Um, uh, one that I'm comfortable talking. Well, I already gave you guys one, which is the credit card based purchases. One, another one that that it, it's actually live and it somewhat got leaked by Reddit. We haven't really announced it, um, but we'll we'll do a proper launch soon. Is that you can also tip on all discuss powered blogs now. So discuss is a, a supported platform. Um, another one that's coming out very soon, and um, I yeah, I don't want to get. Well, no, I'm, I'm comfortable that it's going to come out soon, uh, is SoundCloud. You're going to be able to tip on SoundCloud soon. Um, beyond that, I'll, I'll lay a hint, uh, which is when content 
is upvoted on something like Reddit, um, that's an interesting signal of its quality. But when content receives a tip, it's a much stronger signal of the quality of that content. And so we've got some ideas for what to do with that, and, and, and it's going to be awesome. This has been an awesome time and an amazing interview, Nick. Uh, our guest this week has been Nick Sullivan of ChangeShip. Thanks for joining us. All right. Thank you. Thanks a lot.
diese Idee bekommen habe. La idea consiste principalmente en lo siguiente. The idea mainly consists in the following. Die Idee besteht hauptsächlich in folgenden, folgendem. Imprimir en direcciones de Bitcoin en papel. Diez o mínimo diez o mejor cien. To print Bitcoin directions in paper. At least ten or better hundred. Bitcoin adressen in papier ausdrucken. Um, minimum zehn or besser gleich hundred. Y luego poner en cada dirección de Bitcoin una pequeña cantidad de Bitcoin. And then put in every Bitcoin direction a little amount of Bitcoin. Und dann in jede Bitcoin Adresse eine kleine Summe von Bitcoin transferieren. Y la próxima vez, cuando otra vez ves una persona por la calle pidiendo dinero. And the next time you see again a person begging for money on the street. Und das nächste Mal, wenn du wieder eine Person auf der Straße betteln siehst. Y para tus amigos y amigas, and for your friends, of course, und für deine Freunde natürlich, o tal vez eh, de propina en un restaurante, or maybe a tip in a restaurant, oder trinkgeld im restaurant. Bueno, a la hora de imprimir también, Copiar y guardar las llaves privadas de Bitcoin, de direcciones de Bitcoin. Or when you print the Bitcoin addresses, um, copy and save the private keys of the Bitcoin addresses, of course. Wenn man die Bitcoin Adressen druckt, auch die... Uh, Auch die privaten Schlüssel, Bitcoin Address Schlüsseln, ähm, kopieren und speichern. Y a la hora de distribuir las direcciones de Bitcoin, escribir la fecha, por ejemplo, hoy es el 15 de abril 2015. Escribir la fecha más plus cuatro años eh, igual 15 de abril 2019. And then in the moment when you distribute uh, the Bitcoin addresses, you write the date, for example, today, April 15th, 2015, plus, plus, Four years uh, is April 15th, 2019. Und dann in dem Moment, wenn man die Bitcoin-Adressen verteilt, auf das Papier schreiben, das heutige Datum, zum Beispiel 15. April 2015, plus vier Jahre, ist gleich 15.04.2019. Luego vas a explicar a la gente, mira, esta es la llave privada. Tú y yo la tengo, la tienes. Si no quitas, transfieres este dinero de Bitcoin, eh, en estos cuatro años yo lo vuelvo a tener, tener o sacar. Then you explain to the people, look, this is the private key. I have it and you have it. If you don't take this money, Bitcoin, out of this account, I will take it out in this 
um, in these four years, at the end of these four years. Und dann erklärst du den Leuten, schau, das ist der private Schlüssel. Ähm, ich und du haben diesen privaten Schlüssel mit Wenn du äh, bis Ende dieser vier Jahre das Geld Bitcoin nicht raus tust, transfer, äh, dann hole ich es zurück. De esta forma, das más motivación a la gente para empezar a aprender cómo funciona Bitcoin. This way, you give more motivation to the people to learn how the technology of Bitcoin functions. Auf diese Weise gibst du mehr Motivation den Leuten zu lernen, wie die Technologie von Bitcoin funktioniert. En mi video antiguo he explicado eh, cómo he tomado la decisión de los cuatro años. In my old video I explained how I made the decision for the four years. In meinem original video habe ich erklärt, wie ich zu die Entscheidung getroffen habe äh, mit den vier Jahren. A continuación voy a pegar este video. Now later I will paste this video. Im Anschluss werde ich diesen Video ankleben. En este momento el precio de Bitcoin es muy económico. Uh, at the moment the price of Bitcoin is very cheap. Pero casi todo el mundo tiene muy poco dinero para invertir. But almost everybody has a very little money to invest. Debería decir que esta idea me vino hoy especialmente cuando vi otra vez una chica ahí pidiendo dinero por la calle. Actually, I must say first this idea today I got especially when I saw again um, one girl begging for money in the streets. Me gustaría ayudar, pero yo tampoco me sobra mucho el dinero. I would really like to help everybody, but I, I don't have either too much money. And así que me vino la siguiente idea. So I got the following idea. It's, uh, it's más bien un juego. Uh, it's a rather a game. Um, lo que es muy importante elegir un monedero de Bitcoin que solo tú mismo, mismo tienes la llave privada. What is very important to choose um, Bitcoin wallet a company which you only possess the private key. For example, uh, blockchain.info. Por ejemplo, la empresa blockchain.info. Luego, imprimir en papel um, la llave privada y también guardarlo tú mismo. Then to print in paper the private key and uh, of course save for, for yourself that private key. Bueno, ya estamos imprimiendo, imprime por lo menos 10. So now we are already printing, so at least print 10 directions, 10 direcciones. Luego pones algo de Bitcoin. 
también una, una cantidad lo que lo que te da la gana en esta dirección then you put some bitcoin uh, the amount whatever you want in that in these directions eh. y la próxima vez que sales de casa ya tienes algo que dar a los que están ahí pidiendo por la calle and the next time you go out of the house you have already something to give for these people who are begging on the streets y por ejemplo y claro para tus amigos amigas and for your friends of course eso da motivación a la gente para aprender bitcoin y Uh, this gives motivation for the people to learn about Bitcoin. Y la parte del juego consiste en lo siguiente. And the game part uh, consists in the following. Explicas a la gente, mira, esta es la cla clave privada, que es la clave secreta. You explain to the people, look, this is the private key, which must be secret. And uh, you have it and if, uh, me. And uh, explicas, esa persona y yo mismo la tiene. Y antes pensaba en cinco años, pero luego cambié un poco de idea de hasta cuatro años. First, I thought of five years, but then I changed uh, my opinion to four years. Later, explain. Después, lo expli explico por qué. Les dices, mira, tienes cuatro años para poner esta cantidad de Bitcoin a otra dirección. Si no lo, lo has quitado después de cuatro años, yo lo quito. So you explain them, you have four years to take this Bitcoin out of this direction, of this secret uh, key direction. If uh, you don't do it, uh, I do it after these four years. So you lose this. That's the, this part of the game. It's uh, la parte del juego. He creado este hashtag uh, BTC4 para hacerlo un poco popular. I created this hashtag BTC4 to make it a little popular. Antes pensaba en cinco años, pero luego cambié a cuatro porque te has dado cuenta que en los Simpsons la gente tiene cuatro dedos. Y Solo do, Dios tiene cinco dedos. Um, first, I thought of five years, but then I changed my mind to four years. Um, did you notice that in The Simpsons, people have four fingers and only God has five fingers. Uh, I'll show some pictures. Voy a enseñar algunos imágenes de los Simpsons. De los manos y dedos de Simpsons. Some pictures of the hands and fingers of Simpsons. Uh, pero antes quiero recordar que um, es muy probable que en también cuatro o cinco en los próximos años el valor de Bitcoin puede subir mucho. Just want to remember before that uh, the price of Bitcoin, the value of Bitcoin can rise very much in these next years. Así que si solo pones una cantidad pequeña más tarde puede ser de gran ayuda.
even if you just put a little small amount later it can be big help uh, no solo para bueno es un juego <laughs> si la persona lo quita antes de cuatro años para es para esta persona si no es para ti si te recuerdas y guardas bien la llave privada so uh, it's this is the game part if uh, the, the person takes the money out it's for that person but if they forget it after these four years you can take it out and it can be really <laughs> bueno imprimir también la llave pública y la llave privada y si por ejemplo okay first translate Print and not just the private key, but on also the public key. Así que si, por ejemplo, explicas a la gente. Mira, si alguna persona quiere enviarte Bitcoin, pero tú no tienes ninguna dirección, así que puedes dar este, esta llave pública a la persona. Mira, muy bien, la llave pública, no la llave secreta das a esa persona o cualquier persona y te pueden enviar Bitcoin a esa dirección. So, remember, uh, the public key you can give to anybody and if somebody wants to send you some Bitcoin and, you, and this person doesn't have any, so you have already this public address where they can send you Bitcoin.